So today we're going to show you how to build a REST service using Visual Studio 2017 in Visual Basic. We've done a video series already in C Sharp. This video will be similar to that. We're going to use a couple of slightly different tools, but 2017 and 2015 are so close together that um, most everything in this area works just fine. You can check out those C Sharp videos and we'll see the popularity of the Visual Basic side to see if we do additional videos here. So uh, what we'll do is build a basic web service um, using Visual 2017 and Visual Basic. So let's talk about what REST is a little bit and why we would want to use it. So REST stands for Representational State Transfer. That's what the, the uh, initials REST stand for. And basically we use get, post, put, and delete to access or modify resources over the web. The best example of REST that exists out there is the web itself. So you've used REST even though you don't know it. You've, you've um, requested web pages typically through a git and that data has come back down to your browser and it's been rendered there for you to do things with. Um, we will use XML or JSON typically to, to move data between the client and server. So when we talk about building a REST server what we're talking about is building a server that runs under IIS, Internet Information Server, and will actually serve up XML or JSON in response to these um, get, post, put, and delete, or also known as verbs, the REST verbs. Uh, the great thing about REST and web services in general is that it's language agnostic. What that means is I can build um, I can build this in Visual Basic and then it can be accessed by Java or um, a browser or um, any other language or even a mobile phone. In the other video series we showed how to actually connect um, to our REST service using an iOS app, for example. So the tools that we're going to use, uh, for this demo we're going to use Visual Studio 2017. The Community Edition will work and it is free. Uh, so I highly recommend that if you don't have this. I'm going to be using Visual Studio 2017 uh, Enterprise, but um, for, the, for what we're doing, it's pretty much the same. We're going to be using a, uh, the Chrome web browser to test. So we're not going to actually write a client. We will write the server. But the client we'll use will just be the browser because browsers know how to talk REST. So we'll do that. And we are going to use the Postman browser extension for testing. So I want to show you how to install that first before we go any further. So if we can go here and under your settings in the browser, go to extensions. And you'll notice um, we were using DHC in the, in the demos before or RESTlet. We're going to be using Postman. And so you can go to the Chrome App Store here with Apps and you can actually add Postman in. So this is the app and what I'm going to do is I'm going to set up a shortcut for this on my desktop and that'll just make it easier for me to get to Postman. So if I come down here and look at the desktop this is the little icon that it created. Now if I launch that it'll launch the browser with Postman already running in it. Okay. All right, so that's Postman. So let's just review quickly how this goes. Uh, the client browser or the client sends a request, an HTTP request, that's the protocol that we use on the web, over to the web server. The web server then will process that and send back a response. Now that response could be a status code, it could be a status code with data, um, so it varies depending on the application. So these are the verbs that we'll be using, get, post, put, and delete. What get does is it will get a resource. So when we talk about a resource, we're you can think of it as things like a web page. But when we're talking about REST and a web server, it could be an object or a set of data, which is what we'll eventually do. Uh, as we put this server together. Post will create a new resource. So let's say we're adding data to the server. We want to write a record to a database, for example. We would post 
using JSON, the data, or XML. We're going to use JSON, but you could use XML. And then the server code will take that, unpack it, and do whatever you have programmed it to do. And it's up to you to, to write the code to do that. And then put will either do an update or replace a resource. And finally, delete will allow us to delete a resource. So if you can imagine a database where we could get data using get. So I want to go get a particular record or set of records. I want to post, uh, create a new record. I want to put or update or replace an existing record, or I want to delete a record. So this is an example of how we might use these verbs. REST will send back response codes. And they, they all uh, are are um, in a certain sequence of numbers. So the 100 series, 100 to 199, are just informational. 200 series, which would be 200 to 299, indicates success. Uh, 300 to 399 is a redirection. 400 to 499 is a client error. There was some problem in the client calling the service. And 500 series is server errors. Common codes that you see over here are OK. For example, a 200 coming back is an OK. 300 is, says multiple choices or move permanently. Uh, you, you want your REST endpoints, the thing that you call in the browser, to be um, pretty permanent. And so you could redirect them if for some reason you needed to rename or change it. Uh, four, 400 is a bad request. It says basically the client put something together that the server didn't understand. A 500 says there was some internal server error. Pretty common as we work through the coding here that someone would make an error in the database query or something like that that would throw a syntax error that would then generate a 500. So general server exceptions will generate 500, um, but you can see all the different things here. Now you might wonder, uh, how do you know which to use? Well, the rules on this are pretty loose. So there's a lot of recommended guidelines and you can go do some research on REST response codes to see what you should use. But especially when you get into kind of custom series, like maybe I want to send back a 229, that may or may not have a well, very well defined um, meaning. And so you, you can use some of these for your own custom stuff. I don't recommend, however, that you try to come up with a whole bunch of stuff that is not being used out there. Try to stick to what's being used. So we're going to go ahead now and jump into our Visual Studio demo. We'll build the server and we'll test it using the browser, which is a big advantage of REST. And so that's the end of our slides. So let's go ahead and launch Visual Studio here. Okay, so Visual Studio, like um, in many things, makes it very, very easy for you to create a service it will do a lot of the coding for you which is why we like to use it but under file if you'll select new and then project open up Visual Basic and select web so this is it says it's going to do an ASP.NET web application which is what we want and we are going to put this in a particular location. So let me just I'll put it in, well, I don't really want to put it in that, well, I'll put it in that folder for now. We can move it. It's not a problem. Oh, that's why. Let's see. Let's find a different folder here. So we go here and over into our UOJ folder and enter REST. And I'm going to create a new folder called VB for our VB examples. And then in there, we are going to call this simple REST server. So that we're building our server again. Um, Make sure that you've checked Create Directory for Solution. These are the settings that you should have. Um, framework, uh, I would just leave the default on this. And let's go ahead and hit OK. Now, 
you have different options here. You may be tempted to select Web API because Web API is the technology that we're going to use. But I want you to select empty and then check Web API. That will keep it from generating a lot of extraneous code that we really don't need for these examples. Okay. And we'll say okay, and it will go out and create that project for us. Visual Studio makes it really, really nice to build software. It's just a great uh, product. It does a great job for things like this. They take the common things that people need to do and really make, make it easy for you to add those in. So it'll take a few seconds here to add this. So it's created this project for us. Now we're not going to deploy to Azure. We're going to run everything locally to start with. So I'm just going to close this window. We don't need it right now. And so it's got a basic uh, web server set up, but we need to add a controller. So I want you to think about uh, the MVC pattern or model view controller pattern. And think of it this way. The model is the data that you're dealing with. The view is the presentation of that data. And the controller is the thing that orchestrates between the model and the view. So... Um, we need a controller. The controller is really the framework for the endpoints that we're going to call. Now, by endpoint, what I mean is when I type in the browser a URL, I'm going to type a specific address. That's an endpoint that we're going to. So the very first thing we need to do is create a new controller. And we will right-click on this and select Add. And then Controller. And we want to, there's many options here, make sure that you pick Web API, Web API 2 controller with read-write actions. Hit Add, and it will give you a chance to name this, and we'll just call it the Person Controller. And hit Add, and it's going to generate some code for you. Okay, so it built right here in this PersonController.vb, it created for us. The controller. And what you'll notice it did for us is it built out endpoints for two, two get endpoints, a post endpoint, a put endpoint, and a, and a delete endpoint. And we're going to focus up here in the get area right now. Again, we may do subsequent videos on the post, put, and delete. So here's what happens. If I call the web server with slash API slash person, it's going to return two values, and we'll show you how that actually works. If I give it a specific ID, it's going to return values. So this is just default code that you would want to replace. So for example, if you, uh, if you called API person, you might want it to return all persons that were available in the database. Now that has some issues with it if you had a lot of data. The, uh, getting the value by the ID is a better way to go because we can actually pass in the ID that's being used. So if I were to pa if I were to send in API slash person slash five, it would pass five into this routine on the server as ID, and then I could go use that to look things up in the database. So we're not going to add any database code in this video, but these are the places where you would actually go and add that code. And what I'm going to do here is I'm just going to make a change and just call this person1, person2, and down here what we'll do is we will say person and it will return person followed by the value of the ID. So Let's keep that as a plus for now. Okay. All right, let's run this. So if we uh, run it, it's going to bring up a browser and it will launch the server, but we're not actually going to use the browser session that it brings up as the way that we're going to interact with this. So it's starting up.
As you know, with an ASP.NET app web application, it's going to compile it and build it for the first time. Okay, so when you get to this point, you know that the server's up and running. And it's, this is the URL that we're going to use. So we're going to copy that. And then what we're going to do is we're going to launch Postman. So we're going to go over to the desktop. And we're going to launch Postman, which will bring up a window. And you may have to sign up the first time. So I'm going to pause the video for just a moment while I sign up. And I'll be right back. Okay, so we're in Postman now. I've signed up. Uh, you'll have to do that. And let's go ahead and put in our URL. And then what we do is tack on the, the parts that we showed in the code, which is this part right here. Now what I'm expecting to get back is two values, person1 and person2. So this is the full endpoint specification, localhost 10, this is just my local server, slash API, slash person. And watch what happens when we send that. You'll notice the verb I was using is a get. So here's the two values that came back. Now if I were to give it an ID like slash 4, yeah, through an exception because of my poor visual basic coding, so let's fix that. We'll run this again. You'll notice that when it threw the exception it came right back in. So we're launching the server again. This is one of the challenges in switching between languages all the time is just remembering all the nuance of the syntax. So it's just starting up again. And there you see that it, it appended that whatever ID I pass in, so if I put something like that, it's just going to echo it back to me. Okay? So that's the basics of how we would do um, a web API based REST server. Oops, we didn't want to launch that. I wanted to get back into 2017. Let's do this. Let's set a breakpoint here. And I just want to show you that this is alive and running. So if I go do person here and send it, All right, here I am stopped and I can go ahead and debug through and, and um, fix any problems, see what's going on in my code so it makes it really easy. So that's it. Uh, you, you now have a full-blown REST server that will handle GET, post, put, and delete. Now this is real simple and a trivial example. Obviously if you're putting code into production you want to make sure that you're putting a lot more rigor around the code. The purpose of these videos however is to show you how easy it is and show you how to put REST services together. Not to get into the details of exactly how your particular application should be built. So I hope this was useful to you. Please let me know by liking or commenting on the video. Also go over and check out the C-sharp videos if you're interested in that. Again, we may do more visual basic videos based on the response that we get to this one. Have a great day.